Heavenly Father, we say indeed, you are beautiful for all situations. You are indeed the joy of the whole earth. And so, Lord, tonight, the ones you love have gathered to honor you. The ones you love have come again because, Lord, it is in the place of prayer that we are able to ex to express ourselves to you and receive your mercy. And so, Father, we thank you, the ones that you sent Jesus to die for. We are here tonight again, Lord, and we say, blessed be your name forevermore. Blessed be your name, King of Kings. Blessed be your name, the high and exalted one. Blessed be your name, the King of glory. Blessed be your name, the shepherd and the bishop of our souls. We magnify your name, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Good evening again, beloved. As we come to the hour of prayer tonight, I want us to go to the book of Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. The Bible says from verse 21, Romans chapter 3 from verse 21. But now the righteousness of God has been revealed independently and altogether apart from the law. And it says this, that the righteousness we have now comes by believing with personal trust and confident reliance on Jesus Christ as Messiah. Messiah. It says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It says now in verse 24 of Romans 3, we are justified and made upright and in right standing with God freely and gratuitously by his grace, by his unmerited favor and mercy through the redemption which is provided in Christ Jesus. This is the amplified version. I want you, child of God, to begin to thank the Lord tonight. The Bible says the righteousness we now have is not a righteousness that comes from keeping the law, but is the righteousness that comes by faith, uh, that Father God has gratuitously by grace given to us. Uh, let's begin to thank our Father tonight uh, as we come under the covering of the blood of Jesus once again. Uh, Father, we thank you tonight uh, that we are all justified and made upright. We are in right standing with you tonight uh, by the redemption which has been provided in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord, uh, that Lord tonight uh, as we have gathered, uh, this is a gathering of the same of God. We are saints by reason of the blood of the everlasting covenant. We are saints by reason of our faith in Christ Jesus. We are saints by reason of what you have done for us. And we say thank you, mighty God. Be exalted tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Romans 3 verse 25. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible, brethren. The Bible says about the Lord Jesus, it says, God put him forward as a mercy seat and as a propitiation by his blood through Jesus Christ. When we come to Jesus Christ, we have come to the mercy seat. Our Lord Jesus Christ is mercy seat personified. And it says, when we come to him, we receive propitiation by his blood. By this, the Bible means the cleansing and life-giving sacrifice of our atonement and reconciliation through faith. This is all that we receive in the name of Jesus. I want you to thank God tonight and say, Father, I thank you for the Lord Jesus who has become my mercy seat. And I thank you for his blood, that he is the propitiation for my sins, that every punishment that was due to me, every punishment that was due to my family, every punishment that was due to my bloodline, tonight, by reason of the blood of Jesus, we have received deliverance. We have received what we have received cleansing. We are cleansed by reason of the blood. We are perfected by reason of, of the blood of Jesus. We have been reconciled with God by reason of the blood. The Bible says in that Romans 3.25 that I've just read that Christ Jesus has come as a mercy seat for us, as a mercy seat. In other words, Christ Jesus is an altar for us, but he's an altar that speaks mercy over us. I want you to begin to tap into the altar that is the mercy seat of Christ Jesus and say, Heavenly Father, I plead the blood of Jesus upon my spirit, my soul, my body. Heavenly Father, I plead the blood of Jesus upon my family, upon all that concerns me. I come by this blood. As I come to the mercy seat tonight, I obtain mercy. Mercy means that I am not treated the way that I deserve to be treated. Where I have failed, the blood of Jesus covers. I receive mercy. I receive mercy. Let the mercy of God speak over us. Let the mercy of God speak over 
our bloodlines. Uh, let the mercy of God speak over all the families represented here in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, the Bible says uh, Jesus is the mercy seat for us. Uh, he's the propitiation for our sins. Uh, so therefore, Lord Heavenly Father, tonight, uh, every family that is here on this prayer altar, we bring ourselves uh, under the covering of the mercy seat. Uh, we are covered. Uh, Lord Jehovah God, uh, cover every family, cover every lineage, uh, cover every bloodline represented on this prayer line. May we come under the covering of the blood of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the testimony of the blood of Jesus be heard uh, over every family, wherever their accusations are. Uh, against any one of us, uh, against any family on this platform, uh, wherever there are accusations that would contend uh, with our prayer altar, wherever there are accusations that would contend uh, with the mercy and the goodness of God for our lives. Uh, Father, we activate the blood of Jesus from the mercy seat, uh, that blood that is the propitiation of our sins. Uh, let the blood speak over us, O oh God. Uh, let the blood speak a new beginning. Uh, Lord, in this season of Passover, we are asking for the blood uh, to testify a new testimony over every family represented here so that in the realm of the spirit uh, as we begin to pray uh, that Lord our voices uh, are backed up with the authority of heaven uh, that our voices are backed up uh, with the authority of the king of kings and the lord of lords uh, anything that would question any child of God on this platform uh, we silence it by the blood of Jesus uh, father we thank you and we bless your name uh, you are worthy to be praised uh, you are worthy to be exalted uh, you are worthy to be magnified uh, yes uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the voice of the blood of Jesus speak over every one of us here in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. When we go to the book of Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8 from verse 1, the Bible tells us that there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. And it says in verse 2 of Romans 8, that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. Child of God, there is a superior law that is at work in our lives. And this is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. This law, the Bible says, it sets us free from the law of sin and death. Anything that is not good in your life, you can trace it back to the law of sin and death. Is it sickness? Is it disease? Is it failure? Is it shame? Is it cycles of frustration? Is it cycles of disappointment, we can trace it back to the law of sin and death. And tonight the Bible assures us that you and I, we are not condemned and that there is a superior law that is speaking in our lives. And that is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Wherever you are, child of God, I want you to begin to decree it tonight and declare it and proclaim it and say, there is therefore now no condemnation over my life. There is no condemnation over my family. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free has set my family free from the law of sin and death. Whatever sin and death is trying to bring in our lives, we declare tonight that we have been set free. We have been set free from the manipulations of the evil one. We have been set free from evil alliances. We have been set free from agendas of wickedness. We have been set free from anything that is not of God. Wherever the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus begins to operate, every other demonic power is broken. Every strength power is broken. In the mighty name of Jesus, begin to speak and say, over my life, over my family, there is a law that is speaking. And the law that is speaking is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is speaking over our health. We speak in our lives, in our physical bodies. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is speaking healing. In our families, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus speaks wholeness. It speaks enablement. It speaks empowerment. Whatever it is that we need, we find it under the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And this, this night, we begin to declare and say, yes, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is speaking over each and every one of us. Anything that represents sin and death is subdued, is subdued and overpowered by the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Still in the book of Romans 8, Romans 8, we know from verse 14 that the Bible tells us that as many 
as are led by the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. The mark of sonship is that we are being led by the Spirit, that you are a son of God. The proof of it is you being led by the Spirit. I want you to begin to pray tonight that, Father, even as I've come to that place of prayer, I am asking, let the Spirit of God lead me. Let the Spirit of God lead every prayer that I will be raising. In the mighty name of Jesus, child of God, I can give the prayer point in a certain dimension and the Holy Spirit may interpret it for you in a different dimension according to whatever it is. That is the circumstance on, 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 on the ground wherever you are. I want you to begin to pray and say according to Romans 8, 14, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Tonight I, list, I receive the leadership of the Holy Spirit. I am led by the Spirit. Everything I do is led by the Spirit. Every time I open my mouth to pray, I am led by the Spirit. Even after we've logged off from this prayer call, you will continue to be led by the Spirit. As you go to sleep tonight, you will be led by the Spirit. Every time you open your mouth to speak or to pray, you are going to be led by the Spirit. Because as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the Son of God. Yes, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you, my brethren, on this altar, that in the name of Jesus, tonight, may you be led by the Spirit. For the rest of your earthly lives, may you be led by the Spirit. Every Everything you do, may it be a prophetic act that is led by the spirit of truth, the spirit of might, the spirit of power, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of knowledge. Yes, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding. May the spirit of the Lord lead you in every dimension in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you tonight for your sons and daughters here who are being led by you, who are doing your will, who are praying your will in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Child of God, when you go to the book of Matthew chapter 28, Matthew 28, um, I'm reading it in the New Living Translation. Jesus came and told his disciples, he says, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Now Jesus is the head of the church. We are his body. The body needs the head to be led and the head cannot operate on its own without the body. Jesus is the head of the church. We are the body. And he said to us, the church, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. And then he said to us in verse 19 of Matthew 28, he says, therefore go, therefore go. Go in the authority. Go in the authority. We have authority. The Greek word exousia. Authority means you have the right and the power to enforce a particular thing. When you have authority, you have the right and you have the power to enforce a particular thing. Jesus said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. And he says to me and you, go therefore, go in this authority. He has delegated the authority to us while we are here on earth. The Lord expects us to bind and to loose what needs binding and loosen. He expects us to decree a thing and it is established because he has given us the authority. He expects you and I to look around us and see the things that are not the will of God and be able to stand and say in the name of Jesus, I will not permit this because we have the authority. God is expecting you and I to exercise that authority. So tonight, child of God, I want you to begin to thank the Lord and say, Lord Jesus, I thank you because I've been given authority. You said all authority in heaven and earth has been given to you and you commanded me to go therefore in this authority. He spoke again in Luke 10, 19 and he says, behold, I have given you power and authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. He said, nothing shall by any means harm you. Child of God, are there things right now in your life that are trying to harm you? Are there serpents? Are there scorpions? Serpents and scorpions here is just an image of anything that represents represents satanic power, anything that represents authorities and ordinances of wickedness, anything coming out of the pit of hell, anything that is not of God, anything God didn't ordain for you. Child of God, look into your life right now. Is there anything you're seeing that is not emanating from God? Anything that is not coming from God? Whatever is not good is not from God because the Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of light with whom there's no variableness or shadow of turning. Right now, I want you to use the authority that God has given you and be 
begin to speak and say, by the authority that God has given me, according to Matthew 28 verses 18 and 19 and Luke 10 and 19, I step on every serpent and scorpion. I come against every ordinance of wickedness. I come against every demonic power. Anything that is not of God, anything God has not ordained for me, for my spouse, for my children, for my children's children, anything God has not ordained for any of us on this prayer call tonight, we use the authority that Jesus gave us and we trample upon them. We refuse for Satan to flex his muscles against the church. In the mighty name of Jesus, anything that is not of God, child of God, you have the authority. You have the right to rebuke it. Begin to speak and say, I rebuke you, Satan. I rebuke anything that is not of God. In the name of Jesus, by the ordained authority that Jesus has given to us as the church, we rebuke the works of the devil. We rebuke sicknesses. We rebuke diseases. We rebuke infirmities. We rebuke anything that emanates from the dimensions of hell. We rebuke satanic opposition. We rebuke hindrances and oppositions. We rebuke satanic Lord Almighty God uprisings. Anything that has risen up in the realm of the spirit against the children of God, we rebuke it. We come against it in the mighty name of Jesus. We say, Satan, you have no authority over the church. Anything that is not of God, anything that doesn't glorify God in the church tonight, we rebuke it in the mighty name of Jesus. We use the authority that Christ Jesus has given us. He says we will trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. He said nothing shall by any means hurt us. Therefore, Father, tonight, anything that emanates from the pit of hell, anything that emanates from satanic agendas and satanic agreements, we trample on it. We trample upon it. Whatever is not of God, we refuse for you to continue. You cannot flourish in the midst of God's children. We refuse for any satanic power to try to dominate any child of God on this prayer call. In the mighty name of Jesus, we use the authority that God has given us and we rebuke the enemies of God. We rebuke satanic powers. We rebuke anything that is not of God. Every circumstance and situation that has been engineered from the pit of hell. We come against you tonight. We refuse for you to continue. You cannot continue. We terminate your evil assignments in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray. Amen. In the book of James chapter 4, James chapter 4 verse 7, the Bible says, submit yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God. And then he says, resist the devil. Take your stand against him firmly and he will flee from you. Child of God, when you look at the meaning of the word flee, flee doesn't mean that um, the devil will just, you know, reluctantly, stubbornly, sluggishly begin to leave your presence. No. When the Bible says, submit yourself under the hand of God, resist the devil and he will flee. Flee means that the devil or the demons or whatever it is that is opposing you, flee means that they will run away in terror. That's what the word flee means. Flee means they will run away in terror. It doesn't mean that they will stubbornly drag their feet. No. When you take your stand and you resist and you say, I refuse to submit to anything that my heavenly father has not brought my way. I refuse to submit to sickness. I refuse to submit to that diagnosis. I refuse to submit to whatever Satan is trying to bring into my family, into my children, into my children's children, into my business. I refuse to submit. I resist it. What happens is that they will flee. They will run away in terror. Knowing this child of God, I want you to begin to speak in the name of Jesus and say tonight I take my stand against every advancement of the satanic realm, against my destiny, against my life, against my family. I resist the devil and tonight everything that represents devil in my family, in my household, in my bloodline, they must flee. In the name of Jesus, every demon, every assigned demon, every familiar 
spirit, every unclean spirit, wherever they've been released from, I take my stand against them. I resist them and they must flee. They must flee from my house. They must flee from my house. They must flee in the name of Jesus. Anything that God has and sent my way, I refuse to tolerate it. I refuse to tolerate it. I refuse to tolerate it. Child of God, refuse to tolerate anything that is not of God. You know what? My name is Patience, but you know what? There is a day the Lord spoke to me and said, stop being patient with the things that you're not supposed to be patient with. There are some things that we ought not to be patient with. Yes, patience is a fruit of the Spirit, but there are some things we ought not to tolerate. As soon as you see it rearing its ugly head, you rise up and say, you know what, devil? You've come to the wrong address. Rise up, child of God. Begin to pray tonight and say, I resist the devil. Whichever direction the enemy has come against you, begin to resist. And tonight, in the name of Jesus, they must flee. Because the Bible says when we resist, they will flee. Refuse to accept it. Refuse to accept to live your life substandard. Refuse to live beneath the standard that Jesus died for. Jesus died a cruel death. He died a painful death. He said in John 10.10, 10, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I, the Lord Jesus, I have come that you might have life and life in abundance. Child of God, if you're not living an abundant life right now, refuse to tolerate it. Lift up your voice and say, I resist. I resist. I resist. I rebel against poverty. I rebel against failure. I rebel against frustration. I resist. I refuse to accept it. In the name of Jesus, I refuse to accept it for myself, for my spouse, for my children, for my children's children, for my siblings, my brothers, my sisters. I rebel on their behalf. I refuse it. I refuse it. We refuse it tonight. Whatever God has not given to us, we reject it soundly. We reject it with authority. We reject it and say no. In the name of Jesus, we bind the enemy. We bind the devil and his agents. We refuse anything God you have not given us. We reject it. It's not our portion. We will not accept it. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If we go to the book of Exodus chapter 1, Exodus chapter 1, when the children of Israel began to increase and multiply and grow, and there was a new Pharaoh who didn't know Joseph, they began to say, come, let us deal shrewdly with them. Let's deal wisely with them. These people are multiplying more than us. If there's any war, they might join our enemies and fight against us. And the Bible says in Exodus 1, 11, so they set over the Israelites taskmasters, taskmasters to afflict and oppress them with increased burdens. And the Israelites built Pithom and Ramesses as store cities for Pharaoh. But notice the key word in Exodus 1, 11. Number one, they gave them taskmasters. And what did the taskmasters do? They afflicted and oppressed them with increased burdens. Same trick that the devil is using today, giving God's children increased burdens, setting taskmasters to afflict, to torment, to oppress All of a sudden, there's a diagnosis. All of a sudden, there is pain. All of a sudden, such and such a thing has happened. I want you to take your stand tonight and say, in the name of Jesus, I come against every taskmaster that has been assigned to afflict and oppress me. In the mighty name of Jesus, I come against you. I come against you by the authority that I've been given in the name of Jesus. And I say, your assignment over my life is finished tonight. It comes to an end. Your assignment over my family is finished. Your assignment over the church of God is finished. I locate every taskmaster, every taskmaster that have been assigned to afflict and oppress the church of God. We come against you in the name of Jesus. We bind your power tonight. You cannot prosper. You cannot prevail. We refuse eh, to be oppressed. We refuse to be afflicted in the name of Jesus. Whatever is the dimension of affliction, whether it's psychological affliction, whether it's emotional affliction, whether it's financial affliction, whether it's marital affliction, whatever it is, whether it's a 
disease or a diagnosis, whatever it is, in the name of Jesus, I come against every taskmaster, every taskmaster assigned against God's children. We arrest you with the finger of God and by the authority that has been given to us in the name of Jesus, we come against you and we terminate your assignment. We terminate your assignment. Taskmasters, we terminate your assignment in the name of Jesus. Over every child of God, under the sound of my voice, I terminate the assignments of taskmasters. Every demonic oppression, every demonic affliction, it comes to an end in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The other thing you will see in that scripture I read is that these taskmasters gave God's children increased burdens. The only increase we want, child of God, is increase in the goodness of the Lord, is increase in prosperity, is enlargement of our coast, is increase in wonders of God in our lives, is increase in testimonies. We don't want any increased burdens. I want you to lift up your voice and pray. Christ Jesus died that you might have life and life in abundance. You cannot enjoy your life if the burdens keep increasing every day. Today, Auntie Soren Soil has been like this. Tomorrow, Uncle Soren Soil needs help. Tomorrow it's your daughter and your son and your spouse. If burdens increase, we cannot enjoy our lives. Lift up your voice before we begin to round up tonight and say in the name of Jesus, I reject every attempt by the enemy to increase burdens in my life. I reject it. I refuse it. I refuse every burden. Every yoke that the enemy is trying to place on me, I refuse it. Jesus said that his burden is lighter. His yoke is easy and his burden is lighter. I refuse any increase in burdens. Any plan of the enemy to cause us to be carrying loads that don't belong to us, we reject it. Oh, that's why I love my family from West Africa. They will say, let the owners of the evil loads carry their own load. I refuse any increase in burden. I will not carry any burden. My family will not carry any burden. My siblings will not carry any burden. My children's children will not carry any burden. Nobody connected to me will carry any increased burden. Here on this platform tonight, any burden that Satan has rolled into your family, rolled into your path. Uh, we locate it by the finger of God and we roll it away. We reject it. Uh, every demonic burden assigned to stop you from living the life God ordained for you. In the name of Jesus, we chase it away. But Christ has died uh, that we might have life uh, and life in abundance. Uh, he says his burden is easy. His yoke is light. His burden is easy. We refuse to be burdened by any satanic agendas in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, as we round off tonight, uh, I just want to pray over you, child of God, uh, and declare over you and your household uh, that it is well with you uh, by the blood of the everlasting covenant uh, you are freed uh, from every satanic oppression uh, by the blood of the everlasting covenant uh, you are released into your divine destiny in the name of Jesus uh, every strange burden every strange responsibility that doesn't belong to you let the whirlwind of God sweep it away and let his glory envelop you let his glory envelop your family let it be well with each and everybody here on this platform in the name of Jesus uh, from tonight uh, may you begin to see the beginnings of your freedom, financial freedom, psychological freedom, emotional freedom, spiritual freedom, freedom in your relationships, freedom in your marriages, freedom in your academics, freedom in everything that God has brought your way. Freedom. You are moving higher. You are not oppressed. You are going higher and higher by the spirit of the living God. The next time I'll be seeing you, we will be sharing testimonies of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Father, we bless your name tonight and give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen and amen. Once again, as your people will be going to bed tonight, Lord, as we prayed at the beginning, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Father, lead your daughters, lead your sons in the place of their sleep, Lord. Release prophetic dreams to them. May they see revelation. May they see insights. May they begin to get deeper understanding of your purpose for them in this year, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I insulate every family representative presented here in the blood of Jesus and declare that Satan is not able to tamper with their dreams or tamper with their testimonies or tamper with anything you're doing in their lives. They will sleep in peace and wake up in peace to the glory of your name. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. May we please share the grace and fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen. Shalom, shalom. Good night. Amen.
Good night. God bless.